In the previous example, we found the distribution of the minimum of two discrete random variables. In this particular example, we find the probability density function of the product of two continuous random variables, and more specifically, two independent uniform 0, 1 random variables. So to put in a little bit of notation, to get this set up, x1 will have the uniform distribution with parameters 0 and 1, and x2 will also have the uniform distribution with parameters 0 and 1. And our interest here is the distribution of capital Y, which is a function of the random variables x1 and x2, and the specific function that it is, is the product of x1 and x2. So again, steps will be numbered. Here is step number one, which is find the support of x, which is denoted by script A. And in this case, script A will be the set of all x1 and x2 values that fall in, if you look at the, uh, the distributions of the two of them, that fall in the unit square. So x1 lies between 0 and 1, and x2 also lies between 0 and 1. That ends step 1. Step 2 is to determine the cumulative distribution function of x. Now, in this particular case, that's what is one done in one dimension. Here in two dimensions, all I'm going to do is put down the joint probability density function, and that joint probability density function is the product of the marginals. The marginal for x1 is simply going to be 1, and that gets multiplied by the marginal for x2, which is also 1. So the joint distribution f of x1, x2 is 1, and that is once again defined on the unit square, which is being given here. Step 3. Find the support of y equals g of x. Well, if x1 lies between 0 and 1 and x2 lies between 0 and 1, then their product, which is being called y here, must also lie between 0 and 1. So there is going to be the support of the product of two independent uniform 0, 1s. And that brings us to step 4. Step 4 always starts the same way, which is find the CDF of y, which is the probability that the random variable y is less than or equal to little y. And in this case, the random variable y is the probability that x1 times x2 is less than or equal to y. Now, over here in the picture, here is script A. This uh, unit square is script A. And when you say, where is the product less than or equal to Y? Well, I have one particular instance here of the product, um, X1 times X2, um, being equal to Y. And that happens to be this hyperbola right here. Well, when you want the probability that x1, x2 is less than or equal to y, that's the shaded region here. So that's what we're after. When we want this probability, we want the volume below the joint probability density function above this shaded region. Now, that's not going to make you real happy in terms of setting up the uh, double integrals because you've got to set one set of double integrals here where you have 1 as an upper limit and 0 as a lower limit, and then another set of double integrals here where you have the hyperbola as the upper limit and 0 as the lower limit. So this is kind of a generic look. I guess this is for about y equals 1 fourth. But what we're going to do, and I'll start at the far left here, is we're going to take 1 minus the probability that x1, x2 
is greater than y. And the reason we're going to do that is now we have this white region here. And when we set up our strips in this region, you'll notice that we always have the same lower curve and we always have the same upper curve in this case. And that makes it a whole lot easier. In fact, let's go ahead and put these limits in here. This upper curve here is x2 is equal to 1. And if you solve the hyperbola here for x2, you'll get y over x1 for your bottom curve. So the bottom curve here is always x2 is equal to y divided by x1. That'll help as we're setting up the limits. So in this particular case, we want to say this is 1 minus, and here is the double integral. And it's the double integral over 1 as an integrand. That's a nice thing to support. Because our strips, we decided to run them this way, we have dx2 dx1, it would have been perfectly fine to have run them in the other direction. And so what we have here in terms of this double integral is the lower limit here will be y divided by x1, lower curve, and the upper limit is always here at x2 equals 1. Now these strips begin over here and they begin at the value y. And the way you determine y is you solve the two simultaneous equations x2 equals 1 and x1 x2 equals y. And you will get this point. And this point right here is at y1, which means the strips will start at y and they will end out here at 1. So this becomes the integral from y to 1. In this case, the integral of 1 with respect to x2 will just give you x2, and that will be evaluated from y over x1 up to 1, dx1. And when you plug in, you get 1 minus the integral from y to 1 of 1 minus y over x1 dx1. Now this particular integral here, if you integrate uh, with respect to x1, the 1 will integrate to x1, and then the y over x1 will integrate to y times the natural log of x1, and those will evaluate from y up to 1. When you plug in a 1, you will get 1 minus 0, and so 1 minus 1 gives you 0. That goes away. When you plug in your lower limit y, the negatives here will cancel, and you'll just be left with y minus y ln y and that will be valid for y values between 0 and 1. So all of this algebra here effectively is step 5 which is perform the algebra to get the CDF of y. So at this point we move on to the next uh, slide and on the next slide since we're being asked for the probability density function I'll copy over what we had a second ago the CDF is y minus y times the natural log of y and that's for y values between 0 and 1 from the uh, previous page we have to do the option optional the optional step 6 and that is to differentiate this with respect to y to get the probability density function. So the derivative of y is just 1 minus, and here we have to use the product rule. So the product rule gives you the first times the derivative of the second minus the second times the derivative of the first should have a plus here. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And so in this particular case, you get negative 
natural log of y because the ones drop out. Now that negative might make you a little bit nervous, but it shouldn't for the following reason. Whenever you plug in a y value between 0 and 1 into the natural log, you will always get a negative number. So this negative will cancel with that. So the probability density function, as always, will be greater than or equal to 0. If I were to draw a picture of this probability density function, here is y. Support goes from 0 to 1. Here is f, some y of y. And the probability density function looks something like this. Now, is there an intuitive explanation for why so much of this is being pushed into the left part of the support? And there is. If I have a realization, and if I were to say to you, give me an x1 value, that is uniformly distributed between 0 and 1, you might say something like 0.7. And then if I say give me another independent uniform 0, 1, you might say 0 0.4. I'm only giving them to one digit here to keep the numbers simple. Well, that product is 0.28. And notice they are th this number has to be smaller than both of those. And that is effectively pushing the distribution to the left and that's a little bit of intuition on why you get um, something with more density closer to 0 than closer to 1. Apple confirmation, very simple. x1, uniform random variable 0, 1. x2, uniform 0, 1, random variable. y is equal to the product of x1 and x2. There is a product uh, routine that is written, and those will return the probability density function as the natural log of y. So the conclusion is, if you take the product of two independent uniform 0, 1s, you get a probability density function that looks just like this.